Welcome back to the shop, my friends. Steve here at SKS Props, and today's build video is pretty unique to the channel, but I had a ton of fun putting it together. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I made a foam dog skull mask with a movable jaw. Now, the thing I absolutely love about this particular project is it is extremely versatile. You could use it for so many different things, like have you ever wanted to make a fursuit or a scully? This would be the perfect type of a base skull mask for a project like that. In your D&D group, let's say you're a druid and you wanted a skull bone ritualistic mask. Works for something like that as well. You could also take parts of this PDF, which is free and available over on my website. And let's say the top half of this skull, you could take that part of the PDF, scale it up, and you could easily make yourself a helmet or just utilize parts of it for armor for your medieval warrior. I'm really excited to put this out there in the community because I know how creative you all are and I can't wait to see what you do with it. Just like all the rest of my builds, this is made completely out of my HD foam and my foam clay, both which can be found over at Blick Art Materials. And if you're new to the channel, HD foam is something that I developed. It's foam specifically designed for prop and costume fabrication. If you wanna support this channel, by all means, pick some up, go through the links that are in the description section and those that are on my website. Every time you do, not only are you getting fantastic foam for crafting, but you're supporting me, which means I get to continue to make awesome things like this give you free PDF files and show you how to put it all together. So I want to show you what it takes to put this dog skull mask together. Let's go ahead and get started. This is how I make more durable templates. I'll color on the back of the printer paper with a graphite stick and then pressing firmly I'll trace the template which transfers the graphite to the poster board. Now I just need to cut them out and I have more durable patterns. To start my skull I'm going to take part A and trace that onto some six millimeter foam. To get a mirror image, I put a dot of glue on two pieces of foam, and I cut those out on my bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw, of course, you could also just cut these out by hand. This process just helps me save some time. To make the bridge of the nose, I'm going to take part B and also transfer that onto some 6mm foam. I'm also going to score down the middle of this piece, but not go all the way through. Part C is going to be traced and cut out of some 2mm foam and then adhered to the back of part B. This excess foam is going to help when gluing the skull together. Part D is going to make up the top of the skull. This is also traced and cut out of 6mm foam. And at this point I can take my heat gun and add a light heat treatment to all the foam pieces, making sure to bend them into shape. To help adhere the two halves of the skull together, Part E, which is made out of 2mm foam, is glued behind Part A. Super glue is added to part C, and you can see how having the excess foam makes it a lot easier to glue this section together. I can now tack the front of the skull together with some super glue, and I put a small strip of 2mm foam behind for reinforcement. Part D can now be glued behind, and notice that I'm rounding the top of the skull as I'm adhering it. The sections at the end of part D can now be glued onto part A, and we've already got a pretty decent base for the skull. To bulk out the skull, we're going to be adding layers on top and then sanding those down later on. So for the front of the muzzle, 6mm foam is going to be traced, cut out, and glued for part F. To bulk out the ridge of the skull, we're going to take part G. That's also going to be traced and cut out of some 6mm foam. This process is going to give us a lot of layers, but sanding and foam clay will smooth it out in the end. To bulk out the section for the teeth, part H is going to be traced and cut out of 6mm foam two times. I wanted the skull to start to have a little more dimension, so for the cheekbones, part I is traced and cut out of 10 millimeter foam. Part J is gonna give some dimension to the sides for his teeth. You could use six millimeter or four millimeter foam here. With the top of the skull roughed in, it's now time to make the jaw. And to do that, I'm gonna take part K and transfer that onto some six millimeter foam two times. To support the jaw and give it a little bit of volume, part L is going to be traced and cut out of 10 millimeter foam. This section could be glued in between the two part K pieces.
To bulk out the side of the jaw, part M is going to be traced and cut out of some 6mm foam. Notice that while I'm gluing this piece into place, I'm rounding part K. To fill in behind the nose, part N is going to be traced and cut out of some 4mm foam. I was still refining the template at this point, so I was marking the length of the teeth. Part O is going to make up the top teeth, and these are cut out of 10mm foam. And notice how they fit with the lower jaw. All the other teeth were cut out of 6mm foam, and after I glued them on, I thought they were a little too long. So I took my scissors and I cut away any excess. The smaller teeth at this time were also applied to the lower jaw as well. Now it's time to start sanding so I can refine these shapes. A smooth sanding drum on my Dremel rotary tool allows me to carve away the foam, giving it a nice organic look while still retaining a decent amount of volume. Here you can see the difference in sanding before and after. With the front of the nose now refined, I can add in the lower teeth. Just like the top, I want to make sure that placement is good, and then part P can be traced and cut out of 10mm foam. I cut the bottom of the tooth at an angle, and then I can refine it with my rotary tool before I mark and glue it into place. The front teeth are marked and cut out of a strip of 6mm foam before being rounded over with my rotary tool. Make sure to look at the video because I cut the front of the nose flat before gluing these teeth into place. The teeth on the bottom jaw can also be attached at this time. Any additional refining can now be done with a small stone bit on my rotary tool. To make up the very back of the skull, part Q is going to be traced and cut out of some 6mm foam. The thing to note here is that where the two pieces meet in the middle, that needs to be cut at an angle. With the two pieces glued together and rounded over, these can now be glued behind part D. I was still refining my templates at this point, but you can cut away any excess foam so that the jaw moves freely. I can now sand down the transition between part D and part Q. I do a final light heat treatment on all these sections and you can see how this skull is really starting to come together. So we're to the part of the build where you've got a decision to make and that is how are you going to finish your mask? Now, if you're going to use this for a fursuit or a werewolf or a blade from Elden Ring, this is perfect. This is exactly what you want. All the pieces have been rounded over with a rotary tool. So if I was to lay fur on top of this, everything's going to be nice and smooth. Now, I want mine to go a little bit further than that. I want mine to look like bone. So I'm going to be adding some foam clay and additional textures to mine. Also, the jaw hinge still needs to be created. To do that, I'm going to be using a couple of Chicago screws. So let me show you how that gets done. I picked up some 3 quarter inch Chicago screws from my local hardware store. I'm going to cut back into the top jaw around the seam area. This is going to hide the screw on the side of the jaw and make it look more seamless. The foam can now be super glued back together with the screw in place. The lower jaw can now be drilled through and it's placed onto the Chicago screws. I want this point to be reinforced so I'm going to be using some styrene. This is the same material as like a plastic yard sale sign. The styrene piece is going to be drilled through and then cut to size. The plastic pieces can now be glued to the back side of part K, reinforcing this pivot point. To make up the difference in the thickness of the screw, some additional 6mm foam is cut. These sections are glued to the back corners of part K. To help the screw head rest on something a little more stable, some washers are added to the top of this piece. Using my rotary tool, I can now clean up the back of the jaw. The Chicago screws can now be assembled, and as you can see, the jaw swings really well. To have the mask form fit to my face better, some small strips of 2mm foam are glued to the back side of part K. These are adhered into place while the foam is rounded and it will retain this curve. To smooth out all the individual bone sections, I'm going to be using my foam clay. All you need is some water, some sculpting tools, or just your fingers. The first thing you want to do is wet the EVA foam surface. This is going to help the foam clay adhere. And what I'm doing here is just filling the gaps and smoothing the transitions between all of these pieces. This also allows me to build up areas or gum lines using tools. The types of tools you use really just depend on the application. I'll usually start by using my fingers and then switch over to smaller tools to get the details. And the way that I work with foam clay is I usually add more than necessary because once it dries I'm going to go back and sand it down anyway. 
Now one thing you need to know about foam clay is even though the material is soft right now, eventually the moisture will wick out of it and it will become rock hard. So you don't really want to use it on pieces that are too thin or are going to flex too much. And after you're done sculpting, you want to let the foam clay dry for 24 to 48 hours. This will allow the material to skin over and then you can sand and detail it with a rotary tool. 24 hours later, my foam clay has a decent skin on it and I can start to refine the shapes using a sanding sponge. This allows me to knock down all the high areas and start to smooth out the transitional pieces. To make the pores in the bone, I'm going to be using a stiff bristle wire brush. This can be tapped into the surface at different pressures to get different results. I'll also brush the foam to give it subtle striations. These are the type of simple tricks that really start to show once paint is applied. For the jaw mechanism, I'm going to be using small rubber bands. Strips of 2mm foam are glued to either side of the jaw and each one includes a rubber band. I mark where the rubber band needs to attach to the inside of the skull while it's stretched. Then additional strips of 2mm foam help glue it into place. And here you can see it's just enough tension to bring the jaw back up but not too much so it's difficult to open. For my chin to rest comfortably inside the mask where I can manipulate the jaw, I'm going to attach part R. This is made out of 10mm foam and you may need to make this piece custom to fit you. To make the sutures in the skull, I'm going to be using a heat tool with a detail tip. Now remember, even if you've been doing this for a long time or you're brand new, if you're ever heating foam, you need to do it in a well-ventilated area and always wear your respirator. And the respirator needs to have organic filters. But here you can see this process works fantastic and it does a great job adding these small details to the skull. I can also use the side of the heat tool to round over the teeth and make them look more natural. This is the type of process you could easily overdo, so just use your best judgment for your mask. I switched over to a round tip on my heat tool to add the depressions in this part of the skull. If you don't have a heat tool or a tip like this, you could also do this process with your rotary tool. To make this mask fully adjustable for multiple wearers, I'm going to be using some tri-glides and some 1 inch elastic. The elastic is cut to approximately 11 inches, and then I can hot glue the strip around one end of a tri-glide. The excess elastic is then fed through the opposite tri-glide to make an adjustable head strap. I mark the placement of the strap slightly above my ears, and then I can use my double adhesive method of hot glue and super glue to secure it into place. Strips of upholstery foam are glued over these areas just so the mask is a little more comfortable to wear. I'm going to be using some chiffon fabric to black out the eyes. Now normally I wouldn't add this until the mask was painted, but at this point I wanted to test fit everything and I'll rip these out and replace them later on. It's now time to seal and prime the mask, and to do that I'm going to add a couple light layers of Plasti Dip. Once the Plasti Dip had cured, I'm going to dust the surface with some Krylon Red Oxide Primer. The painting process for the bone color is going to consist of a lot of washes and dry brushing. The first wash I'm going to add to the mask is Liquitex Heavy Body Unbleached Titanium. This pigment is applied all over the mask with a mop brush and a bunch of water. I'll then go in with a damp paper towel to remove some of the excess paints. This is also applied to the lower jaw before a hair dryer is used to lock it all in. Now a layer of dry brushed unbleached titanium is applied to the mask, making sure not to get it down into all of the crevices, because we want a lot of these details to show through in the end. And for those of you that are new to this channel, I love the painting process and I do lots and lots and lots of layers. Now I'm going to mix up a darker wash using raw sienna, burnt sienna, and Mars Black. This mixture is generously applied over the entire surface using a large mop brush. And just like before, additional pigments are dabbed away using a damp paper towel. What this does is it tints that first layer of unbleached titanium and it preps the surface for more layers of paint. While I'm allowing this to dry, I'm going to add some additional Mars Black to the mixture. This is then going to be painted to all the recesses on the mask using a filbert brush. 
And you can see even at this point, all those layers are starting to show through one another and so it's making some really nice color combinations. Now I'm going to take some of that raw sienna and mix it with the unbleached titanium. I'm going to selectively start to place this on the mask to accentuate highlights. Liquitex Heavy Body Parchment is going to be added as my final highlight. Now this pigment is very opaque, so I want to make sure when I'm doing the dry brushing techniques that I'm not applying too much. With this paint, I'm really only applying it to highlight areas and focal points I want attention to be drawn to. With the painting complete, I can now remove the fabric that I had in there for the test fit. And as you can see, the colors, the pores, the details, everything together looks fantastic. It definitely does not look like foam and foam clay, and that's the point. I can now go back and add new fabric to the eyes to once again black them out. And make note here I'm using a low temp hot glue gun. You do not want to be using your fingers on a high temp version. As I work my way around the inside of the eye, I am stretching the fabric. This will help alleviate any wrinkles on the surface. I always cut the fabric a little bit bigger than I need, and then I can go back with a pair of scissors and trim away any excess. And at this point, I'd say this mask is done. So you all can see the steps that I took to put together my own custom dog skull mask with a movable jaw. And I know that's a lot of steps, there's a lot of painting involved, but I'm so happy with how it turned out in the end. It looks fantastic and I'm really excited about putting this pattern out in the community and seeing what you all come up with because I know you're going to do something creative. And if you are building any of my builds or utilizing HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I recently started redoing Maker Mondays and I just might feature your work. So until next time, build your best with the best. HD Foam.